the grain seminar is being conducted by the National Farmers Organization all across the country, wherever grain is produced, are becoming very important. They're catching on because they fill a need. All grain farmers in recent years have felt like outsiders looking at a changing structure. They have sensed that the closely held grain trading firms dominated both domestic and world trade. So today we're going to have a brief look at the people who have been conducting these grain seminars for the NFO. First, Dolores Johnson, one of five women grain specialists, she tells of their purpose. Basically, to educate the farmer to the situation that he finds himself in today. Unable to secure the cost of production plus a reasonable profit. Why he is in that position. And we're going to teach him how to climb out of that position. I noticed you were getting some very good questions. And there was a good deal of talk about the structure of the grain trade now. Is this part of these grain seminars? Yes. What the farmer needs to combat this, what will you give me program, is a marketing system of his own whereby he can put a price on his product and secure that price from the grain trader. Another grain seminar moderator is Leland Townsend of Michigan. He tells what the NFO means when they use the term power block. Well, basically, you got five major buyers, and we're going to have to get production in large enough volumes to deal with these buyers enable us to sit down and negotiate price. So you need a power block to talk to these major buyers. What's the technique? Do you bring this into the market all at once? No, it's an orderly marketing program. Uh, they need to supply 365 days a year. Farmers need to move their production each year, but they want a fair price for it. So that's our program, to orderly market it at a cost plus a reasonable profit. Wayne Bradison of the Farmers and Merchants National Bank of Watertown, South Dakota, has an observation about marketing in an orderly fashion as bearing on the financing problem. Farmers and uh, the farm program is badly in need of an orderly marketing program. It seems to me that all of the other programs that have been thought of and tried, such as your storage programs, your idle acres programs, really don't get to the uh, solution that I think the farmer deserves, and uh, that is to make sure that he gets a real good price for his product. The farmer has an orderly marketing program and can grow the grain, grow the product, uh, raise the livestock, and always be assured of an adequate price to produce a good return on his investment that this uh, profit-making farmer can then run his own affairs properly. That was Wayne Bradison, president of the Bank of Watertown, South Dakota. From South Dakota, let's move to nearby Minnesota for a report from Lee Soltis, who has an observation on the growing support for NFO's grain seminars. I think an in indication of the excitement that's out there right now is we had a county meeting up in Minnesota where there's 140 people came to their meeting that they have up there, and they're looking for about 200 this meeting. And I just talked to a guy that's working up there now, and uh, we got about five new members yesterday. So it's really building, and we're really excited. The grain seminars have been attracting the interest of business people, especially country bankers. And here's one of them, an Iowa banker who served on the Federal Reserve Board at Chicago in the early 1970s. He is Floyd Whitmore of the Oakey Vernon National Bank of Corning. We asked Mr. Whitmore why country bankers are encountering short supplies of operating loan money for farmers. For the most part, where we used to make loans of twenty-five or fifty thousand dollars today, it's two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars. Lots of them, and and it's just taking so much more money than we've ever had to raise in the past that uh, you begin to wonder: Well, is it a shortage of money, or is it a, a shortage of farm income and ability to pay? That's one of the big problems. And I think that uh, it isn't just getting this money; you have to repay it. And every time you borrow these huge sums, and, and we're doing this all day, every day with our farm customers, making cash flow statements, we find that what they're doing uh, is, is increasing their farm loan. But by the same token, that's going to increase their fixed expenses for that year, for they're going to have a higher interest cost, and they're going to have a payment on that loan. That was Floyd Whitmore, president of the Oakey Vernon National Bank of Corning. Far to the west now as we hear a report from Ed Butcher of the Rolling Hills Ranch of Winifred, Montana. Ed has been conducting grain seminars out there in that big country, and he tells how they're going. We 
just finished one in Haver, Montana, and we signed up in Section 1, 9,600 acres. Uh, we signed up in Section 2, our power base under the five-year program, 97,570 acres. So the, the acres are coming. And one thing that has been real helpful in selling the NFO program here is the fact that we have unit trains. We have the 52-car unit trains where we can haul 172,000 bushel at a time to the West Coast. Uh, we have all of these lease hopper cars. We have the transportation facilities in Montana, which the line elevators don't have, and they're having to truck it out. So the members are realizing a substantial benefit in terms of uh, dollars. They're looking at uh, anywhere from 20 to 40 cents a bushel over the local markets because of these, uh, tra these facilities. So NFO has shown the producers that they're a real professional organization. That was Ed Butcher, one of NFO's grain seminar moderators. We talked to Al Aiken of the Grain Department Home Office. Al has been coordinating reports from the various grain seminars around the country. He says that as a direct result of these seminars, the NFO has three times as much grain production signed up on a per-year basis compared to figures before the grain seminars began. Aiken especially called attention to volume gains in Kansas and South Dakota. Aiken said, we've made progress because these seminars let the grain producers know the facts about how they can move in regular steps into orderly marketing based on cost of production and reasonable profit. Merle Sunken, Director of Operations for the Hog Division, has returned from a 10-state trip visiting with hog producers of every size and description, both in and out of the NFO. He also talked to packers, both large and small. The packing industry people are at the place where they are very definitely looking for a group of people that can give their production to them on an even flow basis. And the hog producers in this country are very definitely, or in these 10 states that I was in, concerned about their cash flow problem. It just simply aren't making ends meet at the present prices. They're very definitely looking for a supply management program that they can work together with their neighbors and putting hugs together and giving a packer a good source of supply at a fair price. Merle Sunken, Director of Operations for the NFO Hog Division. Speaking of packers, as Sunken was in his report, Walt Hackney, who heads all livestock for the National Farmers Organization, has a word about an area where several packers have been going out of business. Walt, in this situation, is it an advantage to cattlemen to be part of a nationwide organization? It really is, Phil, and right now is a classic example of that. We're experiencing a problem in eastern Colorado, western Nebraska, and western Kansas as an example. Our cattle feeders that we represent in that country right now have pretty well lost their source of processors. Uh, through labor negotiations and for other reasons, there has been a tremendous amount of plants that have closed down in that community that these people rely on us to sell their product to. Consequently, uh, we have been going into that area and we have been concentrating uh, with the cattle feeders out there encouraging them to give us these volume blocks that they have currently on feed, move those blocks and volume out of that area to take the pressure off out there. Uh, you've got a few packers left out there, but they are so overloaded, and they can only kill so many cattle, and the, and the overload is such that by moving these blocks out of that community, taking them into areas that have more of a need for that product, we've been able to kind of stabilize the market in both areas. And I know it's been met with a lot of appreciation from the cattle feeders. We are now getting a tremendous amount of activity concerning our program from people that formerly didn't feel a need for a collective national system such as we have. That was Walt Hackney, head of livestock for the NFO. And now in conclusion, here is Devon Woodland, president of the National Farmers Organization, with a word about those all commodity seminars coming up shortly. Something's happening. We're receiving reports in from various areas uh, in the Nebraska-Colorado border. Uh, Lauren Miller reported in that he had signed 56 new members in two 
uh, consecutive meetings. I received just a report this morning from Kenton Bailey up in Maine where he had enrolled 76 new members over a short period of time. And then up in uh, Minnesota, Wally Soltis reported that he had enrolled some 50 new members. Why are you going to have general bargaining seminars, Devon? Well, I think there's too few of people across the United States that really understand what the programs are of the National Farmers Organization. We're finding that those who are now getting ready for operating capital this spring are going into their source of farm financing, the credit people, and they're being cautioned about their ability to repay and that many of the loans that were made last year are still open. They have not been retired or paid off. And so the availability of money is very critical now and those in agriculture are looking for something different because they know that what they have been operating under and the programs that they have been exposed to in the past simply haven't served their needs. And they're looking for something, and we have a responsibility to go out to them, show them, and tell them what we have, and then we have filled a responsibility to them. If they choose not to accept it, then we still have served our purpose. The grain seminars that have been held in all the grain producing areas are kind of a model for this, aren't they? Yes, they are. We're going to have what we call all commodity agriculture bargaining seminars that will include uh, milk, all meats, and all grain, and specialties where they apply. When and where? We have 24 states scheduled that will take place during the week of March the 17th. Throughout that week, these meetings will be held geographically in each state where access roads lead into. We'll have a team of four men that will be in each of these states all across the 24 at the same time that will be professional people in these fields that I've just mentioned. And uh, they will hold a series of three meetings per day for four days in each one of these states, making a total of 12 meetings. Why are they having the meetings for several days in a row? That's an interesting point. Well, what we hope to do, and our experience has proven to us that it will work, and that is the first day, because of the enthusiasm that we can generate towards our program, the first day attenders will go out and uh, recruit and bring in additional people and so we plan to stay in preferably one place for four days or at two different places at the most. Uh, building a crowd with the spark that we generate the first day, fanning it the second day, and then sending that enthusiasm back into the counties where really the agriculture production is. One of the items we see in the news, Devon, is about the bankruptcies and the financial troubles of some of the processors and the buyers in the food industry, packers going broke, grain elevators, and all that. Does the National Farmers Organization have plans to counteract this situation? We became fearful of this happening several years ago, and the National Farmers Organization established a reserve program which assures against buyer default. Uh, it assures our people that they will receive a 100% payment on all commodities that are sold through the organization. Our credit department runs a constant check on all uh, credit as far as our buyers are concerned. And I don't think there's any place in the country that uh, gives any producer the protection that we give our members. Uh, we think that it's just something that has to be because of the uncertainty of the times. It sounds to me from the structure of these meetings that the National Farmers Organization is making pretty long-range plans, Devon. Yes, I think we have to recommit ourselves to the goals of the organization, which is cost of production plus a reasonable profit. And you have to make long-range goals. You can't make plans on 30-day programs. So we're looking now at uh, one, two, three, four, five years uh, commitment by the membership. Today we have brought you the County Informational Tape Service. And that, for this month, is something to think about.